Hi, my name is Denis Fyodorov, and in this video I will tell how to learn the hardest and most important part of the whole Russian grammar – Russian cases. I am going to tell this uh, stuff in simple words, uh, so you could understand how to learn Russian cases and go through the beginner's Russian grammar without making uh, all these mistakes that you could make if you wouldn't watch this video. Ok, let's start. First of all, what is the case? In general, cases are situations where the word has appeared. Here is the visual example. In this example, the football or the soccer player is kicking a ball. Well, the player himself is playing the leading role here and he is kicking the ball. The ball is kicked by the player, that's why it plays the role of the object here. And the ball is kicked with the leg, or in other words, the player used his leg to kick the ball. So, in this situation there are three nouns. The player, the ball and the leg. That's why the cases are needed to identify who is who in this situation. Obviously, the player is the main here, the leg is his instrument and he uses it to kick the ball. The ball is the object lying on the grass and waiting to be kicked. When the player kicks the ball, well, the ball will be flying and will be the main part of the sentence. But now, right now, the ball is only the object. I hope you understood that. So, a word can play a leading role in the sentence and do something. Or something may be done to it, with it, or about it, on it, after it, inside it, and so on. That is what cases are. They show this stuff. They show the role of the word. Four parts of speech can have cases. Nouns, adjectives, numerals, and pronouns. But the main thing is, of course, cases of nouns. Because other parts of speech have the same case as the noun, so they depend on it. One more example, a deeper one, to make you understand the cases better. Let's take a word table. Table can, uh, can find itself in different situations and can play different roles in the sentence. Uh, let's take a word table and look what happens with uh, it in different cases. Nominative case. У меня есть стол. I have a table. Genitive case. У меня нет стола. I have no table. Dative case. Я подарю каждому из вас по столу. I will present the table to each one of you. Uh, accusative. Uh, я люблю этот стол. I like this table. Instrumental case. Я доволен своим столом. I am happy with my table. Prepositional case. Я думаю о своем новом столе. I am thinking about my new table. Now look at English examples. We declined the word table in different cases. And actually, we see no real significant and visible difference. The word table stays the same in every sentence. That's why cases in English are only some theoretical stuff needed for specialists only, maybe. But those who learn English as a foreign language do not learn cases at all. Technically, in English, we use prepositions and other nouns to identify what role the table plays in the, sen uh, in the sentence. Uh, and... Uh, I like uh, this English approach because it is simple. But in Russian the situation changes dramatically. The word table, stall, changed its ending four times. Two times it didn't. That's why we need to learn cases in Russian. Because in Russian we use cases everywhere and a lot. I mean in every sentence. And in different cases the words have different endings. Four parts of speech – nouns, uh, pronouns, adjectives and numerals – change their ending. And spoken and written differently. And it happens in every sentence. Let's go forward. So, in simple words, a uh, case shows the role of the word in the sentence. Along with cases, uh, a very important moment is declension, or in Russian it is called uh, sklanenie. Uh, declension is when you change uh, the form, gender or the case of the word. And in Russian language it is done via changing the ending of the word. So, declension is the mechanism uh, of changing the word from its original form 
by changing the case, uh, gender and the form. And again, we decline words by changing the endings. We simply change the last letter of the word or last few letters according to rules. Okay, there are six cases in Russian. Nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, instrumental and prepositional. And as I mentioned before, uh, four parts of speech can have cases. Uh, nouns, adjectives, numerals and pronouns. So, to learn cases, it means to learn to change endings for four parts of speech in six cases. Moreover, in singular and plural forms, there are different endings for the same cases. In addition, in masculine, feminine and neuter genders, uh, words have different endings. Plus, there are irregulars in Russian, so there is a pretty large amount of stuff. That's why cases are, are called the hardest part of the Russian grammar. And when you learn them, uh, the most of Russian grammar will be behind. Let me explain now how to learn Russian cases. The key to understanding cases and learning to decline words uh, lies in the first unit of Russian grammar, Russian cases of nouns. Uh, to learn cases in general, you must first uh, master Russian nouns, uh, the main part of the speech. Because first of all, uh, the case of other parts of speech depends on the noun. They have the same case. Second, uh, the mechanism of declension of other parts of speech is the same as in nouns, but more simple. So, in the nouns unit, you will learn how to know the case and how to change endings. And later you will be applying your knowledge uh, to other parts of speech, and the difficulty level will be decreasing. So, the noun is the main and hardest uh, part of Russian grammar, and the thing is that you need to learn it first. And it means uh, to learn the basic information about nouns, uh, to learn the forms of nouns and uh, to be able to change them, uh, to learn genders of nouns and to be able to identify the gender without any stumbling. And only then you learn cases of nouns. So, to learn the cases, you need to learn forms and genders first. Genders. The situation with Russian genders is pretty different from English. Yes, we have the same three genders, neuter, masculine and feminine. But many English uh, neuter words in Russian have masculine or feminine gender. Like in, in Russian, computer is he, internet is also he, YouTube also he, while your keyboard or mouse is she. Because in Russian the gender of nouns depends on their end, and according to rules you need to learn uh, to identify gender of nouns. And gender of other parts of speech depend on nouns. So again, nouns are essential, and when you learn to identify gender of nouns, you will know the gender of other parts of speech. As for genders, Probably the first video I ever recorded was about them. In spite of that, it has worse quality and looks much more or less professional. It still has good stuff. Also, I have a secondary video about the genders on this channel. Moreover, I have created a very handy and understandable PDF with the rules on genders and an exercise to master them. In the description, I will give you a link to the videos and PDFs, uh, and if you follow my advices there, in, in short period of time, you will be free with Russian genders. Forms now. Well, Russian and English are very close here. The same singular and plural forms, and the same mechanism of changing the ending. In English, to get the plural form, you add s or es to the nouns usually. In Russian, you add also an ending, so there is the same mechanism. On this channel, I have a short video about forms of nouns. The link is in the description. Now, cases. I have told you about cases before and in the description there is a link to one additional video about cases. Watch that video. Watch all the stuff I mentioned, uh, train a bit and you will be ready for cases. So, now about learning cases. The thing is that cases is not some isolated thing, and they are very interconnected with forms and genders. And cases are learned through the mechanism of declension. 
Before I told you about declension, it is changing a form, a gender or a case of the word. And it is done via changing the ending. Maybe you have seen that there are uh, first, second, third declensions in Russian grammar. If not, no biggie. Generally, there are just rules uh, that combine the gender and the case uh, all together. You can learn Russian grammar through the, this mechanism or there is the way uh, that do not involve this mechanism. It depends on the textbook uh, you are learning with. Here is what I mean. Here is the rule for genitive case for nouns. And the mechanism is the following. We take a noun in the nominative case. It is the default case and all nouns in the dictionary are in the nominative case. And we change the ending according to gender and the form. The word dom, house. We look at the word and according. To its last letter, we see that it has masculine gender, because it ends on a consonant. So, to get a singular genitive form according to rule, we add a and get doma, dom, doma. If we want genitive plural, we add of and get damov, dom, damov. So, we say in genitive case, I have no house, у меня нет дома, I have no houses, у меня нет домов. Uh, so, that is the mechanism. We identify what case we want a noun or other part of speech to be. Then, according to rule, we detect its gender. Decide what form it should be and then change the noun into the case. Nailed it. It is done with the help of rules and practice, especially practice. Have you seen uh, the rule I have shown you? Well, there are five uh, such big rules for all cases except the nominative and several minor rules. And that's only for nouns unit. Do you really think you can learn them all? I do not stop repeating that language is a skill and you can study all that by simply understanding the theory and practicing a lot. Okay, now one very important moment. How can I know that I need prepositional case or instrumental case or accusative or some other? Well, you can't on your current level. And you should not bother yourself with these question. You will need your endings changing skill in the future. For now, just learn the theory and I mean understand it, not memorize it. Practice with exercises. Here I mean that exercises should be easy for you. It means you need more practice that most textbooks offer. That's why I usually recommend to have several textbooks uh, to have more exercises uh, to practice. Now one more thing. Imagine that you can't ride a bicycle and decided to teach yourself. You get a textbook how to ride it. So it says, when riding uh, to turn the bicycle, you need to keep its stability by following the empirical rule. Sign of the angle of tightening is inversely as the square of angular velocity of rotation of a wheel divided by the weight of the cyclist. Well, this info is very helpful. Now you know how to turn the bicycle. Wait, but when you go outside, you see your neighbor's son is successfully riding his bicycle without even knowing what sign and angular velocity actually mean. The same is with cases and grammar. There are so many rules there. What you need to do is to go through their learning, understand them, practice a lot, uh, develop proper patterns and habits. Then to forget all that stuff, but speak and write properly according to properly learned and formed uh, habits and patterns. That's how it is done. So, read this stuff, uh, try to understand it, uh, complete exercises, uh, then complete even more exercises, until they become easy and boring for you. And you will learn Russian on a really good level. Well, that's it, uh, the bigger picture. It covers a really big amount of stuff, uh, so I am glad that now you know how to learn Russian cases and Russian grammar. 
Thank you for watching and bye.